After 20 years of war and a failed peace process, Afghanistan is back in Taliban hands. But the Afghanistan of today is a far cry from the country it once was. Fatima Gailani was a member of the Afghan government's peace negotiation team in Doha, and she says the Afghan people have not lost hope of building a better and more prosperous country for themselves. I'm Melinda Nusifora, and I sat down with Fatima Gailani here at the Antalya Diplomacy Forum for this edition of One on One. Fatima Gailani, thank you so much for making time to speak to us here on TRT World. Thank you, my pleasure. First of all, let's start with the negotiations. You were part of that high-level negotiating team. What went wrong in Doha and did you foresee it ending the way it did? Well, unfortunately, uh, we Afghans, uh, we were very good at uh, missing fantastic opportunities. Uh, Doha peace negotiation was a fantastic uh, opportunity. Uh, everything went wrong. Uh, inside Afghanistan, the voice of the, um, uh, the groups that they were supporting to help us, to support us, the political group was not coherent, it was not united at all. I don't think President Ghani wanted a peace uh, deal at all because he has this illusion that he will uh, turn back uh, the tide and everything will go right for him, which was a huge mistake. And then, as soon as uh, the uh, withdrawal of the American troops uh, without a condition happened, then of course uh, the Taliban side also, they were not very, um, very keen uh, at uh, sitting and talking to us. This was an opportunity and all along I was begging uh, our side and also the other side that a political settlement is important for Afghanistan because we won the war against Soviet Union but we couldn't win the peace. Taliban came uh, after Mujahideen's government, they won the war, they couldn't win the peace. The 20 years with spite of all these millions of money, everyone coming to help us, we couldn't win a peace because in Bonn conference we didn't have Taliban with us. If you miss one element in a peace and political settlement, it cannot go on. So my hope is that this time we will not make uh, the mistakes of uh, the past uh, repeated again. It sounds as if you're, you're saying one of the biggest mistakes was no leadership from the top. The biggest mistake was that we should understand that just winning the war is not enough. And winning the peace and bringing a sustainable peace is not an easy thing, but it is the most important thing that we have to go towards having the voice of the people of Afghanistan and the blessing of the people of Afghanistan for a government that unfortunately so far it didn't happen the way it was supposed to. The international community still doesn't recognise the legitimacy of the Taliban government. What needs to change there and what would you like to see from the international community? First of all, uh, it's a very difficult task. It is not that easy. That for the time being, the question of recognition and question of having some sort of dialogue with Afghanistan uh, is important. There are other countries that they are not recognized, but they are not isolated. Today, Afghanistan is going through um, a humanitarian crisis, and we need help from all over the world. So the people of Afghanistan should not be forgotten. When it comes to recognition, recognition has steps to be taken. And my hope is that the government of Taliban will take these uh, steps towards going to be recognized. The lack of recognition of Afghanistan uh, today, it is not just harming the Taliban, it's harming the whole country. So, yes, today the Taliban has the whole country, they have the whole country, so they have to put steps towards uh, recognition. When what it was do they have to do to get that recognition? What do you think the international community really is looking for? The 
international community should look into the eye of every single Afghan. If the people of Afghanistan will recognize this government as the Afghan government, as their own government, then the world should recognize it. So now how to have on board the voices of Afghan people? When I, when I talk about different voices of different ethnicities, different parts of Afghanistan, I don't mean necessarily the old hats, but the legitimate voice of the whole of Afghanistan. Do you believe that the Taliban can effectively run a stable government and do you think people in Afghanistan are going to want to work with them? Well, I think uh, the most important thing is that the people of Afghanistan, they don't want another war. They want uh, the peace to continue. And in order to have the peace continue, we, the people of Afghanistan, we have to give a hand to the uh, government uh, to carry on and become an acceptable government for the Afghans themselves and to the world. And don't forget that uh, for the past uh, 20 years, with despite of all the faults, uh, we have produced a fantastic number of well-educated men and women. Majority are still in Afghanistan. They are young people, they are the future of the country. They can do that. And from the Taliban side, they have made promises. These promises were repeated several times, starting from Doha, then in Geneva Special Representatives um, uh, Conference, it was repeated. In Geneva, it was repeated. And most importantly, at that very eloquent uh, press conference of Mr. Mujahid, Zabiullah Mujahid, in Kabul, after they took Kabul and the whole of Afghanistan, they made a set of promises which women's issue was included, the whole thing. If they start was by fulfilling those promises, I think many doors will open. You mentioned women there, and that's a really important point. The women of Afghanistan today are not the women of Afghanistan yesterday. They have been taught to dream big and to be ambitious and have learnt to, to be educated and part of society. Where do they fit now? Don't forget, that for the first time when a woman became minister was 60 years ago, I was eight years old. When the same day a woman and a man was allowed or by right to have in the constitution to elect or uh, to be elected was 60 years ago. So we are not alien to see women in, uh, in important posts. But can the Taliban see women well, there? This up and down has happened in the history, recent history of Afghanistan. But for me, that I am from the time of peace in Afghanistan, never in my life, never in the history of Afghanistan, we had in quantity and in quality so many educated, committed, and well-versed women. They cannot be ignored, they will not be ignored. They cannot and they will not, but how do they do it? And is the Taliban giving them room to? The Taliban have said that they want an Islamic way of, for women in Afghanistan. We don't want anything different. We are Muslim women. We know our history. Apart from knowing the Afghan history, we know the Islamic history. A woman has always had an important role, taken from uh, the wife, the first wife of the Prophet, uh, be, peace be upon him, uh, Khadija, all the way down. We had very important and special role that women did play in this Muslim world. We know it and we are there to continue that role and we cannot be silenced. On TRT World, uh, back in April 2021, just last year, you said Peace is not just the absence of war. Peace means inclusivity and the happiness of Afghan people. With that in mind, do you have peace in Afghanistan? I'm telling you that I'm very happy that today in the whole of Afghanistan there is no war. But I repeat again what I've said. A sustainable peace, a real peace will come the day that the people of Afghanistan feel at home 
and they look into this whatever government say that this is my government this is an Afghan government then the peace will continue and the key is in the hand of Taliban and my hope is that they will open that door for the people of Afghanistan do you think the people of Afghanistan share your your optimism we need to be optimistic 44 years of war is enough my trips in Kabul in Afghanistan when I go I don't sit inside my home alone from 8 30 in the morning I see men and women young and old they repeat no war again they repeat I want to be part of the future they want exactly what you want a peaceful country a prosperous country access to education access to health um, facilities and have a dignified country that after 44 years they will look up and say that I am at last at sustainable peace. Is this too much to ask from the world or from the current government of Afghanistan? I don't think so. There has been a lot of brain drain though from Afghanistan. Do you think now seeing what has been done that will encourage people to come back and reinvest themselves in their country. Do you think that uh, how many people have left Afghanistan? How many? Are they the whole of the educated people of Afghanistan? Are they the whole of the future of Afghanistan? Absolutely not. This is one thing we still have very well educated people, very well committed people. I was outside Afghanistan 24 years because of the Russian invasion. But I did go back. I'm sure that everyone will go back if they see a government of their own. They will go back. And if they do come back, what kind of country are they coming back to today? Countries are built by its people. We all have a responsibility to build that country and we'll have to do it. Fatima Gailani, it has been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Thank you Thank for you. making time on TRT World. Thank you.